Two months ago, I uploaded a video showing how I set up this tank from scratch, and it's coming up on its three-month anniversary. Mid-June, I went ahead and ordered a lighting diffuser to hang over my tank. I just received my 3D printed cover that's going to go on the AI Prime. So I thought I'd try and show you the difference. So here's the tank as is. Now I'm just going to hold it in place under the light and take it away. Now I know that's not a great way to give it to you, but that looks pretty good actually. So it's been completely 3D printed. This part here is loose. And there are vent holes in the back to let the heat out the back. I guess heat comes out the back of this light, possibly. And it takes two hands to snap this on. So let me go ahead and install it, and then I'll show you some more. So the light looks a little thicker <laughs> than it did, but it's not obnoxious. And the top area now, the it's it was more bright everywhere, and now it seems to be more focused, but diffused, if that makes any kind of sense. And like I said, the sand bed looks a lot cleaner. Where are all the fish? What's going on? Anyway, I wanted to show that to you. And uh, I just ordered it online a couple days ago and it got here pretty quick. So here's the company. I'm very happy with the AI Prime and lighting diffuser combination. It got rid of the speckled look on the sand bed that was kind of a disco effect. Those large water droplets underneath the acrylic cover were also causing a problem, but the diffuser eliminated it. While building the update video, I had received a package in the mail yesterday. So I've been using the 3D reefing lighting diffuser that you just saw for two months. But the newer version just came out. It's about the same, but slightly different. So you can see the vents in the back are different now. There's only a single vent there. And it's a little higher up. And then you've got these little tiny inserts. So if you wanted, you could just take one of these and you could just drop it in there and then put this in front and it will glow. Or if you prefer a more subtle look like I do, there's a solid insert that you just put in there. And you still have their little logo, but it's a lot less visible. And let's take a look. Snapped right on. Fits perfectly. Let's turn on the light. Here's that new look. The tank always looks best right after a new water change because I go ahead and siphon the sand bed completely and get rid of all the hints of cyano that's trying to creep into this tank. And about two weeks ago, I picked up a lot of frags at Aquashella, and so there's 20 little frags in the tank as of right now. They're mostly softies. That's pretty much the goal of this tank is zoanthids and recordia. I'm enjoying some type of macro algaes in here. I don't want to put in a cleanup crew that's going to eat them. So we'll just see how long I can tolerate that. <laughs> I like my critters. I'm being hyper aware of anything that could possibly hurt the Japanese pygmy angelfish. So no type of anemones of any kind, nothing that can sting or devour my little beautiful fish. I'm really loving how the Helfriki is out so often. She tends to be in the front of the tank. And it's funny, the angelfish will go up to the goby and just kind of hit it with its tail, like flapping it. You may see that in part of this video. You'll have to watch for that. But I see it often. It's like she almost did it right there. She just kind of goes, hey, what are you doing? Come play with me. The lighting schedule is from 3 o'clock to 11 o'clock at night. And this has worked out really well for my schedule because I really enjoy looking at the fish in the evenings. The walking dendro looks super fluffy and it has been navigating or walking all over the tank. And it's each day it's in a new spot, and I'm really enjoying that. I love Recordia and never have luck with them, so I've got these two really pretty ones inside this tank, and I'm thinking they may do better because this tank will notoriously have dirtier water because it doesn't have active filtration. I picked up a couple of sprigs of flame algae, and I put one on this spot, and I put one on the other spot. The other one came loose, so I'm going to have to grab some putty and secure it to the rock because I would like to see them grow and hopefully they'll do well. Each night I squirt in one pipette of frozen fish food that's been thawed out, and I'm keenly aware of the size of the mouths of these tiny fish to make sure that they can actually consume food like P.E. mysis, which notoriously is a little bit larger. The Randall goby is not a big eater. It's kind of weird. I mean, it will come out to eat some. I don't know if it's being shy, doesn't want to be watched, but I think that the stuff that hits the sand 
eventually is consumed by that fish. The average temperature of this tank is 75.5, salinity is 1.026, and there is no top off needed because nothing evaporates. I hope you enjoyed this tour, and if you have any questions, ask below in the comments. And if you're not a subscriber yet, you should do that now.